Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss the practice questions on Darrow in a diagram. We will discuss five practice questions in this topic. So if you can follow with me, if you understand those five questions with me, then you can solve any question in any examination you face, whether it's your assembly or any kind of examination you will face in your life. So let's start it. Before starting my lecture, I just want to remind you that if you did not watch my lecture as I given in in part one and part two of the diary and the diagram, please watch that lecture because if you did not know the concept on this topic, so then this lecture is useless for you. So please watch my part 1 and part 2 of the diary and a diagram where I explain the topic very well or you can uh, can read the uh, notes I provided in my blog so you can see you can find all the link in my de description okay so from there you can uh, go through this topic these things okay so let's come to the main point so first we will go through the basics first there are six darrow in a diagram I discussed. I divided the darrow in a diagram into two parts that is the body fluid disturbance due to the fluid loss and body fluid disturbance due to the fluid gain. So then I divided that two parts into three three each that is the isotonic fluid loss, hypotonic fluid loss and hypertonic fluid loss. Okay and in body fluid disturbance due to the fluid gain I divided it into isotonic hyp tonic and hypertonic fluid gain then i discussed the changes in the ecf volume ecf osmolarity and icf volume so you can relate that if there is a fluid loss then the ecf volume goes down because we know that the loss or gain in the fluid take place in the extracellular fluid compartment okay and in ecf osmolarity you can relate that if there is a isotonic fluid loss it means that there is no change in the ecf osmolarity if there is a hypotonic fluid loss means we are losing the hypotonic fluid then the ecf osmolarity goes up okay in reverse in hypertonic it goes down and we know that the icf intracellular fluid volume is affected by the ECF extracellular osmolarity means uh, increase in the extracellular osmolarity decreases the ICF volume and decrease in the ECF osmolarity increases the ICF volume okay just in similarly in in uh, body fluid disturbances due to the fluid gain we understand that fluid gain is there so there is an increase in the ECF volume in this okay and and you can understand that we are gaining isotonic fluid then there will be no change in the ECF osmolarity we are gaining hypotonic fluid means there is a decrease in the ECF osmolarity we, we are gaining hypertonic hypotonic fluid gain means we are increasing the ECF osmolarity and in reverse we will see the ICF volume because we know that a increase in the ECF osmolarity decreases the ICF volume okay we also discussed the example associated with different fluid disturbances so in isotonic fluid loss is seen in hemorrhage diarrhea and vomiting hypertonic fluid loss is seen in dehydration and diabetes insipidus okay hypertonic fluid loss is seen in adrenal insufficiency that is a decrease in the aldosterone okay and uh, isotonic fluid gain is seen during the infusion of the saline or in the Kohn's syndrome and and a hypotonic fluid gain is seen in primary polydipsia or in the syndrome of inappropriate ADH hypertonic fluid gain is seen in when we take more salt intake or during the hyperglycemia and with the help of this all the following data we made a terrorinate diagram so if you did not watch my lecture please go where i discussed how how we read the darrow in a diagram okay so let's come to discuss our first question okay so our first question is question is that a young researcher is conducting an experiment on the physiology of the body fluid 
He documents specific observation and plot some of them as tarot unit diagram. His, in his study, some diagrams are normal, while most are abnormal. The abnormalities in the diagram are mostly in the form of changes in the x-axis, changes in the y-axis, or changes in both axes of the diagram. Which of the following parameter is most likely to affect the x-axis in this diagram? So this is the diagram. So we know this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. The y-axis is for osmolarity in derivative diagram. Okay, for osmolarity. The x-axis is for volume. Okay, so in our option, Fluid osmolarity, no, this is for y-axis, fluid density, no, we do not measure fluid density, fluid viscosity, again, no, we do not measure this, so our correct option is fluid volume. Let's come to our second question. Which of the following volume changes most likely be seen in a 38 years old man who is lost and dehydrated in a desert? And then he gave us four options indicating a following volume changes okay so whenever this type of question comes just draw the diagram like this and 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 imagine what are the changes we see during dehydration okay so dehydration that is the loss of fluid okay okay so this dehydration comes under the body fluid disturbances due to the fluid loss and in dehydration there is a hypotonic fluid loss hypotonic fluid loss means there is a loss of fluid loss of hypotonic fluid so when we uh, when there is a loss of hypotonic fluid then the our extracellular fluid compartments get hypertonic okay and there is loss of fluid so this will contract also this will decrease also like this okay so our extracellular fluid compartment becomes hyper so this will become hypo so fluid will move toward this direction means our ECF volume will also contract will also decrease and this 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 diagram like this in a diagram will form okay okay means in this diagram we see a loss of hypotonic fluid okay a decrease in the intracellular fluid volume or intracellular fluid volume contraction increase in the extracellular osmolarity is seen okay so let's come to the option so they in our uh, we discussed that there is a loss of isotonic fluid so our option must be from between between b and c so loss of hypotonic fluid okay okay with ecf volume contraction yeah our ecf volume is getting contracted getting less and no changes in the total body osmolarity no there is an increase in the total body osmolarity there is an increase in the extracellular fluid osmolarity okay and icf volume is gets con is also contracting is also getting less so our correct option is option c in our third question diagram a to d shows the relative osmolarity y axis and volume x axis of the intracellular and extracellular fluid compartment during normal condition solid lines and following various disturbances in the body fluid is seen in a shaded area so which of the following diagram best decepts an individual who has cholera without fluid replacement okay so whenever the term the disease cholera comes to your mind just remember diarrhea because the key symptom of cholera is diarrhea and we studied that diarrhea comes in isotonic fluid loss okay diarrhea in diarrhea there is isotonic fluid loss in seen 
so among this four diagram we have to choose a derivative diagram in which there is a isotonic fluid loss okay so first we have to choose in which diagram there is a fluid loss fluid loss fluid loss fluid loss fluid loss fluid gain so this is not in this after that we have to select which of them is a isotonic fluid loss means the extracellular fluid compartment is a isotonic in nature so which is seen in this diagram okay this is isotonic so our correct option is option a in our fourth question a 30 years old man admitted to the hospital because of the acute onset of the right lower quadrant abdominal pain and undergoes an appendectomy the next day he is febrile and continues to have a large volume of the urine output he complains of severe thirst despite persistent fluid intake his serum sodium concentration is 175 milli equivalent per liter and urine, urine analysis reveals a low urine specific gravity so the question is saying that which of the following best represent the patient body fluid balance after surgery okay so the key point here in this question is that the patient experiences a large volume of urine output okay and then he take lot of fluid intake and the question also hints that his sedum sodium concentration is 175 milli equivalent per liter which is way too high above normal because we know that the serum sodium normal value is around 140 milli equivalent per liter and his urine report shows a low urine specific gravity low urine specific gravity means there is a hypotonic urine there is a hypotonic loss of urine okay so let's come to the whiteboard so in this question patient experiences uh, increased urine output and also he he intake lots of fluid so many many people can confuse between these two that whether there is a loss of fluid or a gain of fluid so just remember always follow the primary cause in this question the primary cause is the urine output increased urine output and the fluid intake increased fluid intake is the second see is the secondary cause because of the increase urine output okay so always focus on the primary cause okay so here it is a increase in the urine output and this question also is telling that the sodium concentration is 175 milliequivalent per liter which is way high it means our body osmolarity is high and this question is also telling that according to the urine report the there is a hypotonic urine loss okay it means that there is a hypotonic hypotonic fluid loss is seen in this kind of question so among these four options we need to choose that which option shows a hypotonic fluid loss so what are the characteristics of a hypotonic fluid loss that there must be a loss in a loss of fluid so loss of fluid loss of fluid loss of fluid and in hypotonic fluid loss there is a increase in the body osmolarity or increase in the extracellular fluid osmolarity so this diagram shows an increase in the extracellular fluid osmolarity or increase in the body osmolarity so our correct option is d let's discuss our last question in this question diagram a to d shows the relative osmolarity and volume of the intracellular and extracellular fluid compartment during normal condition and the following various fluid disturbances are shown in a shaded area so which of the following diagram best deceives an individual who runs in a marathon on a hot summer day and replaces all volume lost in sweat by drinking pure solute free water during the race so in this question the primary cause is that person is running in a marathon and he he sweats okay and during during a marathon he also drinks a 
pure solute free water so sweating is the primary cause and drinking pure solute free water during the race is the second cause so we will focus on the primary cause okay so our primary cause is sweating so so in sweating we lose nacl that is we lose hypertonic hypertonic fluid loss in sweating it means our dero in a diagram will be like this and this okay our extracellular fluid compartment goes hypotonic because we are losing hypertonic fluid loss okay and then this that person drinks a solute free fluid okay so when he drinks a hypertonic fluid okay then it again promotes this kind of dero in it diagram so in in the following options this is the correct choice 